And you've always found it fascinating on how people lay out their home screens. And I thought maybe it might be an interesting exercise to do a series that gets updated yearly on how my home screen has evolved. I set up my home screen to work on whatever project I'm currently working on. So right now my home screen is set up for doing these videos, whereas a year ago it was more aligned with uh, writing and development work. So I personally like having everything on one screen. I will never remember the placement of apps I don't use often, so having a second screen would just hurt me in the long run. Usually when I need to find an app that I don't know the placement of, I just use Spotlight. I don't really like to hunt and peck around. I keep all of my apps that I can't fit on the home screen in five folders, and I'll usually just use Spotlight to get to them. I like having an even row of folders for aesthetic reasons, but forcing myself to be limited worked out because I had to be creative about the name and placement of applications. It was also forcing me to get rid of any apps that I weren't using or was out of place on my iPad, like games. The first folder is for daily. This is sort of a catch-all for apps like weather, messaging, deliveries, and shopping. These are apps I can get in and out of every day. Next is productivity. This is for writing, development, PDF and document management, and affiliate links. These are just kind of things I use to work with. Nothing super special, but all highly recommended. Creativity is for something that helps me make something. Whether it's music, graphics, videos, or more, these are the apps that I like to really get in and create with. Entertainment is for video, podcasts, Reddit, and books. You can kind of see in here, these are all just stuff that I like to have fun with. Utilities is kind of a hard one to define, but I like to think of it as apps that trigger something to be done. It can be things like Remote Desktop, Apple TV Remote Launcher, Google Photos, Metaphora, and so much more. So the rest of the apps on here, you can kind of see in the first two rows, these are really apps that would be in creativity. Well, maybe except the last two in the, in the third row. But these are apps that I use to kind of help me create and help me work. Um, first up is LumaFusion. That is my uh, video editor of choice for doing these videos. I edit all my videos on my iPad, and this is the app that I use it. It's a multi-track video editor, and anybody that's looking to do video editing on the iPad, I highly recommend it. Affinity Photo is next, and honestly, it's the Photoshop killer, especially for the iPad. The Photoshop apps for the iPad are incredibly weak and aren't very good. Affinity Photo came in and showed that a real Photoshop editor could exist on the iPad, and it works so smoothly, and I'm still finding features it can do today. I still don't fully have an understanding of that app. It's so great. Bez is an Illustrator replacement. Um, it helps me do vector stuff, but a lot of times I use it for doing the backgrounds for my videos, the gradients you might see. Ferrite is my audio recording app, so I can edit and record all of my voiceovers right in Ferrite and then send them over to LumaFusion. Workflow is a utility that's built all around automation. Apple actually acquired it earlier this year, and I fully expect to see what they acquired it for in iOS 12. I'm a little disappointed it's not getting the regular updates that it used to, but it is still getting some. And now, since Apple acquired it, it's free, so I do highly recommend everyone check it out. I have been doing a, a series of videos on that app as well. Transmit is my, um, well, it's my file trans transfer app. I, this is what I use to send files to my file server. Um, usually it's completed video projects and graphics and things like that. Coda is what I've always used for development. It's great for web stuff and has a bunch of different syntaxes built in. If you do any sort of development work, I highly recommend starting with Coda. It probably could serve your needs. Editorial is my text editor that I used to use a lot. Now I've been playing around with Ulysses, but I, Editorial has a few things Ulysses doesn't. So I kind of keep it around for some uh, edge case stuff. Noisio is uh, a white noise, just a generic, um, kind of like uh, here's some ocean sound applications. I actually did a walkthrough on this one not too long ago. It got an update and now you can actually buy more sounds in it. So that's, that's a little interesting. I highly recommend this if you want somebody that can't focus when, with music in the background, but you still need noise. Instapaper is my go-to reading list application. I've just used it forever. It was one of the very first applications I bought on the iPhone, and I've never ever really looked back. Um, I highly, I love this app, and I highly recommend it if you want a reading list app. Do is kind of a, an advanced timer application. I like this for do, setting things for like laundry timers, washing machine, um, reminding me to check the mail every Monday, and so on and so on. I really like Do. 
Um, it's it's a great app, it's a great timer application, but I think a lot of people confuse it as a task manager, and it's definitely not it. It's it's a timer. It's a repetitive timer application. The Studio app is what kind of helps me keep track of how my videos are doing. It's really not a great app. In fact, it doesn't even support the 12.9 inch iPad Pro resolution. But I like to check it every day just because I like to know and see how my videos are doing. Plus, it helps me answer the comments really easily. The next one is kind of a mystery. I'm not even sure why I have the YouTube application on my home screen. It's not the best version of YouTube. There's ProTube, though uh, Google made Apple we pull that. And honestly, you can't even upload videos correctly in it. It limits to 1080p, so I have to st send stuff over to my file server before it gets uploaded, especially if it's a 4K video. So I'm kind of a little unsure why that video, that's there. I guess it's nice to be able to check in on my videos and stuff, but the Studio app does help me with that. The App Store is an app I'm in every single day. I love to see what apps are being featured so I can kind of find stuff and download it and hopefully find something I can make videos about. Settings is just something that's really nice to be there. It's really uh, handy to be able to go in and out of. I'm constantly changing stuff, especially when I'm in betas. So I'm going to talk about what's in the dock, but I'm not going to talk about how I use the dock. Um, I have an iOS 11 review coming out, and I spend about five minutes just talking about the dock. So if you're interested in how to use the dock, keep an eye out for that. But I'm going to talk about the applications that live within the dock. So in the bottom left corner right now, you see Files. Files is an application that I absolutely love using, and it's fantastic. It came out with iOS 11, and it allows third-party cloud services to lock into it. So you can have a full kind of file view of the, 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 the cloud service. So unfortunately, right now, I'm still in the beta period, so I don't have access to things like Dropbox or Google Drive. So I've been using iCloud Drive with it, and it's actually been working very fantastically. I'm, I'm super excited about that. Right next to it is Dropbox. Um, once uh, Dropbox gets updated and has file support, I will probably get rid of that Dropbox file or the, the Dropbox application living in the dock, that is. I don't really share stuff from Dropbox, so I'm not really too worried about having to keep that, that application in the dock. I, I mostly just use it to access data. Safari is my web browser of choice on iOS just because of how fast it is. It can lock into stuff that other third-party web browsers just can't, so it makes it a lot... It, Kind of gives it an unfair advantage, but you know what? When you're the platform maker, you can kind of do whatever you want. So I like Safari because of its speed and how it works. Chrome is not a bad alternative, especially if you live in the Google universe. But for me, Safari is fantastic. No reason to mess with it. Next up is Mail, and I have the biggest love-hate relationship with Mail. I'm not a big fan of Mail as it is. There's not a lot of features in there that should be in a Mail client that's in 2017. But it's the only mail application that can work with a couple of my email accounts. I have a couple of different email accounts that I have to have, unfortunately. But they're not your typical Google Gmail apps. So third-party apps like Spark and Air Airmail just don't really work with them very well. Um, I still do keep Spark and Airmail around just in case I need to do something that's a little strange with my email. But um, mail is the one that works with all of my email accounts perfectly. Fantastical is one of those applications that just doesn't really fit right on the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. The full screen layout just kind of feels weird. I have to use it in the half, the 50% split screen mode in order to really kind of get used to it. But I keep Fantastical around because I like its input method. It uses natural language so I can add stuff to my calendar quickly. Next up is the holy grail of task managers, in my opinion. Todoist is fantastic. I absolutely love it. It has a back-end web API so I can automate it, and I can really add stuff to it quickly. Notes is next up, and I like Apple Notes mostly because I've been using it on the beta period right now, and it has fantastic Apple Pencil support, which I've been using a lot of. I really like um, the, uh, the tap on the screen feature so I can unlock my iPad instantly and get to Apple Notes. Next is Ulysses. Ulysses has been my uh, text editor that I've been trying out. They recently switched, switched to a subscription model. So if you're somebody that really needs the full power of Ulysses, I recommend checking it out. If you're somebody that just wants to write some markdown, maybe check out something like Editorial or OneWriter. Notability is the app that I use to mark up my scripts. When I'm done with them, I send them over to Notability. I sit back in a chair and use my Apple Pencil and mark it up. I also use it to read my scripts while I'm doing the voiceover work. Photos has gotten quite a few updates recently. It's handy because you can now do search for vi photos and stuff like that. I mostly just use it because it's the default app. It's fine. 
I don't really do a ton of old photo searching stuff. You know, it's it's fine. It's I don't I don't hate it. I don't love it. It could be better. It, it's not terrible. Um, iMessage I use all day long. I'm in and out of that. It's fantastic. I love what they've been doing with it lately. Tweetbot is my go-to Twitter application. I don't even know what the first-party Twitter app looks like anymore. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I absolutely love Tweetbot. My favorite feature is it syncs between the iPhone and the iPad. So where I am in my timeline, because I'm a Twitter completionist, it will uh, sync between the two devices. So if I pick up my iPhone after using my iPad, it syncs right over. Overcast is my go-to podcast player. I love podcasts. I listen to so many, probably too many. Um, for my own good, but Overcast is great. The feature that ha- that basically has me coming back is Smart Speed. It detects the the blank empty spots when hosts aren't talking in the shows and cuts that out, so it'll speed up the show. And I have saved almost 200 hours of watching of listening to podcasts using that feature. Apple Music is next up, and it's fine. It's kind of like Photos. It's fine. I'm I've used that. I've used Spotify. I let, I keep Apple Music around. That's the one I use because uh, I, I like being able to use Siri and tell Siri, hey, play such and such artist and just have it go. The last application is actually a mystery application that I'm not going to talk about it because it's not released yet. I'm on the beta period and we're just going to kind of leave it at that for right now. I'm going to um, probably talk about this some more when uh, after iOS 11 comes out and after this app comes out, I will probably make a video on just that application. That's kind of my home screen, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear what your guys' philosophy on the home screen is. My thought is I'm going to do this yearly. So maybe next time, next year around this time, I'll do an update and kind of see how my home screen has progressed over that time. Maybe with iOS 12, we'll get a huge makeover for the, the way the home screen works. Here's hoping. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe. It does help out the channel. Have a great day.